So the SEC versus Ripple court case has taken another very interesting turn. We got some information yesterday that the case against Brad Garlinghouse and Chris Larson has been dismissed. So let's get into two scenarios that I see playing out. So if you have been living under a rock, let me just bring you up to speed on what's happened so far with the SEC Ripple lawsuit. The SEC came after Ripple saying that XRP, the asset underlying that we talk about on this channel so much, is in fact a security. Time goes on, they lose that case and XRP is deemed not a security in programmatic sales. That means in the secondary market when you buy and sell XRP on an exchange, that is not a, a security. But what there was left still in the tank was actually a court case against Brad Garlinghouse and Chris Larson for how they, on a few sales of XRP, treated XRP as if it was a security, as an investment contract. So while we celebrated and saw the price go up to 94 cents when XRP was deemed not a security, we've also now been waiting for since, what was it July 14th or 17th until today for the results of the second part of the court case to come out, that is against Brad Garlinghouse and Chris Larson. Well, we found out now that that court case has been dismissed. So of course, this has big implications on the rest of the crypto market, but there's a lot going on here that people aren't really acknowledging. One is that the SEC is lo losing all credibility. They, I mean, they are, I mean, Brad Garlinghouse said that, they're, you know, it's three to Ripple, zero to the SEC. They're getting absolutely pounded, defeated in this whole thing. But this dismissal of this Brad Garlinghouse, Chris Larson side of things doesn't necessarily work or make sense for Ripple. Let's get into it. So I found a tweet from Fred Rispoli and I, I'd never seen this guy ever. And he came up, saw him posting somewhere on Twitter. And apparently he's been very vocal and insightful when giving information about this court case. And I found his two scenarios to be really, really interesting and I wanna get into them. Was this whole dismissal just the SEC realizing that they had backed the wrong horse? Or is it an indication of something a lot bigger that's going on? Or maybe it's just the court hinting to the SEC that they don't have their undying support anymore. Scenario one is that this is really just about the individual court case ruling. And there's gonna be so many more battles and headlines to come. And that's obviously just gonna prolong this whole thing out as long as they need it to really. If we're talking about manipulation of the, the, what the government do to the crypto asset world and how this is all so tied into corruption and you know, free passes for Ethereum where XRP didn't get that pass. Ultimately, bringing in the adoption can happen whenever the courts allow it to, or whenever the, the entities that are in control allow it to, the SEC in this case. It makes no sense. All of this makes no sense outside of the idea that they want to drag it out for as long as possible until they absolutely can't drag it out any longer, and then they implement it the way they want it implemented, under the rules that they have made. Remember, these are unelected officials, right? We didn't elect them to do what we want them to do. They're doing what they want to do for their own self-interest, you know, and personal benefit, which we've seen very clearly with Jay Clayton and how the whole Clayton family is involved with Ethereum and have really benefited personally, financially, from their affiliation with Ethereum. But scenario one really makes you think, well, is a settlement even actually even gonna happen here? And particularly for this whole thing, we tend to side on Ripple's side every single time and look at every piece of news that looks like a good thing for Ripple. We view it like that and we're gonna get behind that horse and we will die on that hill. But while we could be looking at this whole thing as yes, Brad Garlinghouse and Chris Larson are free and you know they, they were on the right side of things, actually this outcome, the early dismissal, could bring in or bring about an early settlement. But the big question is, why would Brad and Chris want this to be settled? Aren't they in the right? We're gonna to get to that in a second, but I wanna get into scenario two. Scenario two is this really just shows that the SEC has really lost favor with the courts. And it would obviously point towards an earlier settlement. But that brings us to that big question that I asked earlier. Why would we be wanting a settlement? Why would Brad and Chris want a settlement if XRP and their conduct is in the right? Why did they agree to the dismissal? Because both parties have to agree to a dismissal. And just like Fred said, and I tend to agree, this whole outcome might be paving the way towards a far larger settlement in the future. And if we did get that larger settlement, 
I can't even imagine the earth shattering moves that that would cause in the crypto market as a whole, because a larger settlement at a bigger scale would clearly create a result, right? What we've had is, oh yes, XRP is not a security. Then we've got the Chris and Brad thing, but then we think, why are they accepting that dismissal? Like, you know, there's always another question, but a bigger settlement at the end of the day would remove all of those questions and have and provide us with absolute clarity. And that's really what we want. And that's re not really what we want. We want it secondarily. We want it because when that happens, the institutions will look at crypto as a new asset class that they can actively go into without fear of the volatility and the craziness and the wild westiness of, of it all that it is right now. That barrier to entry for adoption, for utility, is now completely opened. And so the, the SEC have done absolutely all they can at this point to provide, not that, well, they haven't provided the answers. The judge have given judgments <laughs> and then there's always been a but. A bigger settlement, a big final settlement would remove that but. The but it doesn't remove though, how many times am I going to say but in this video? The but it doesn't remove is why you would take a settlement when you're right. Obviously, I don't know law, I don't know the inner workings of all of these things, and perhaps there are very good reasons why you would settle. One of those things is to say, well, we're done with this now, can we please put this behind us? I understand that one, but if Brad and Chris are correct, why would they go for this early settlement? Why would they not just bring it out to a bigger settlement? And maybe people in law can let me know. So in conclusion, we've had some answers, which has led to even more questions. I think this Ripple SEC conflict is is likely to be far from over and i i think we're likely not to see that kind of fantastical pump in the price as a result of any of this news until the news can be circulated around the world that there is in no way xrp being classed as a security ripple's not involved in any court cases and adoption and utility is available to run rampant around the world that's when we start to see price movement for XRP, significant price movement. What significant means that, you know, that's very hard to calculate and that's in a utility environment. We do not know the numbers. I've made a documentary about trying to find the numbers, but just the other day I made a video, if you haven't seen it, where I gave my price prediction for XRP, it's completely based in a speculation environment, understanding that utility can come into play and this price can go wherever it needs to go. Uh, really holding on for that, I'd, I would love that. But if you want a very level-headed approach to a price prediction for XRP, you can wait around to the end of the video and click that video, or you can just go to my channel and look it up now. So that's all for this video. Thank you for staying to watch. Stay emotionless, and I'll see you in the next one. Oh, and if you are in fact interested in taking your digital asset investments and strategy to the next level, I have two things that might be of interest to you. Both of those are in the description of this video. Over the last six months, things have started to shift. And by a shift, I mean, over the last six months, more people who meet that high net worth individual status have been contacting, asking me if I can facilitate large crypto purchases, connect them with people in private equity. And I found, quite frankly, that I've been quite good at that. And as time has gone on, I've really realized that I can connect people with some fantastic deals, great investment opportunities, and provide solutions for people at that level that you've probably never thought of. I acknowledge that not everyone is a high net worth individual, at least yet. And so that's exactly why I've created the 1% Mastermind. Over the last two years of making content, I've seen one of the biggest demands and needs of the audience is to have a list of professionals that you can contact when this whole thing takes off. When all the money comes in, our portfolios are of high value, what now? What do we do? Who do we contact? There's also a group of individuals that want to improve and do business and network among other millionaires to be. Nobody in the digital asset space has ever seen anything like this. Wherever you are in the world, the plan of the mastermind is to be able to connect you with professionals, not only in accounting and tax and law and estate planning, but to connect you with individuals who actually understand the assets you hold. We know about this all too well. We call an accountant and you know more about Bitcoin and XRP than they do. And it's not just a directory of professionals that we're offering here. We also have unique investment opportunities for individuals, even if you don't meet the accredited investor requirements. 
When you think about diversifying your assets in the long term, you might be considering real estate, venture capital, private equity. You won't need to go over here to find a deal. You won't need to go over here to find a deal. It will all be housed in that one central location and you'll be surrounded by individuals that are on the same page as you and want the same thing, not just for themselves, but they want the same thing for you. In addition to all of that, we'll also have a library of content answering your specific questions. Not made for views, not made for engagement, but made specifically to add value to the library of content that there will be. As time goes on, the price of the membership will actually go up and likely will go up every single week from here on out. So join the 1% Mastermind today and I'll see you in there.